Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I would like to give you a, a short overview on the licensing of deep geothermal projects in Hungary. As you probably all know, Hungary is very rich in geothermal resources. It is ranked the fourth in Europe in direct use. So we have more than 1,000 active thermal water wells. We call a thermal water well, which has more than 30 Celsius outflow temperature. So you can imagine that when we are talking at such a high number of wells, the licensing is, is really important that it is easy and transparent and working well. Uh, starting with the with the regulation in Hungary, the uh, the regulation is split between the mining and the water management, which I guess the case in most of the countries, which means that it separates the energy content of the thermal water, so the heat content, the, the geothermal energy basically, and the carrying medium, which is the thermal water, and this causes a lot of problem. So in the mining act. Uh, the Mining Act defines the geothermal energy as the inner heat energy of the Earth's crust used for energetic purposes, and it defines that energetic purpose means heating and and or power generation, which also means that barneology is not under the, the mining law. And the mining law also defines what is the carrying medium of geothermal energy, but it does not make any further provisions. So it defines the thermal water, but, but it does not deal with the thermal water. And any kind of uh, activities related to thermal water are all under the Water Act and the related different regulations. And, and I have to tell you that in Hungary, this is an extremely complex system. So there are at least 20 or 30 different governmental decrees whatever, which, which are dealing with different parts of the, of the thermal water or the groundwater. There was a very big change in Hungary as of the 1st of March, when the, the licensing totally changed. But uh, this table summarizes what was the situation before. So before the 1st of March, the licensing of thermal water wells uh, was uh, uh, defined according to the depths and according to the exploitation method, which resulted in an extremely complex system. So you can see that between the surface and the 120 meters, so basically the, the for the shallow geothermal energy, uh, if it was with water abstraction, there was totally no legal obligations. And it, if it was without water abstraction, so closed loops, then the the company just had to announce uh, to the mining authority, but it did not uh, did not require any license. Between 100, 120 and 2500 meter, and this is this is the depth range where 95% of the thermal water wells are in Hungary, were split uh, whether the energy production happened with or without water abstraction. If it happened with water abstraction, so producing thermal water, then uh, it was under the Water Act and the licensing authority was the, was the water authority and the mining authority only had this, let's say, consulting status on drilling safety issues. And if it was without water abstraction, then the mining authority was the licensing body. And below 2,500 meters, the exploration and production of geothermal energy was uh, in the concession system, which was under the Mining Act. But the, let's say, the cream on the cake was that even in the concession system, if it, the energy production happened with water abstraction, then a permit, a water permit, was also needed from the water authority. So, as you see, it was really very complex and very, very diverse. What happened in the 1st of March, then the regulation totally changed. And from the 1st of March, all geothermal energy exploration and production, irrespective of the production technology and the depths, is licensed by the mining authority, except for barneology and uh, a very, let's say, crazy and peculiar Hungarian thing, except for the agriculture use. So heating of greenhouses is out of the law. And this was, this was purely a political pressure. So this is, this is a very big downside of the system, but 
this is it. So actually from the 1st of Mar March, there is no more concession. Everything is licensed by the mining authority. And the drivers were two big reasons. The first is that the concession system was not successful. So in the past 10 years, we had only one successful deep geothermal project in the concession. And the second reason was that instead of this top-down approach where the, where the state or the government delineates concession blocks, uh, now the whole thing uh, turned upside down and now the project developers can initiate uh, exploration areas. So this is, was thought to be more democratic. And this new system, uh, this uh, new uh, licensing has three phases. So first, uh, there is an exploration request. Uh, so anybody, if anybody wants to look for geothermal energy, uh, the company submits a, a proposal to the mining authority where uh, the, num the territory of the exploration area can be maximum 400 uh, square kilometers. It, it is one block and one company can apply maximum for four blocks. It has to submit a detailed exploration program and the duration of the exploration can be maximum four years. Then the mining authority makes the decision and I will tell a bit more after this how. And then the company makes the exploration for four years, maximum four years. Of course, it can be shorter. And once it is finished, he submits a final report on the exploration results and also a request on the so-called geothermal protection zone. I will also say a few words about it. This is basically a 3D block in which the company is designated to exploit geothermal energy. And once this geothermal protection zone is delineated, then the company signs a so-called utilization contract with the mining authority, where the detailed annual heat production is, is uh, fixed, the ways of utilization, the reinjection and all the, all the relevant issues to the operation. And this is valid for 35 years and can be prolonged uh, maximum or extended one time by 17 and a half years, so by, by half of the time. This is, as I said, the geothermal protection zone. So this is the zone from which the, the mining operator or the geothermal company can exploit the geothermal energy. And this is basically uh, delineated on numerical modeling. So this is basically a 3D subsurface space. And it has to be delineated in a way that the temperature drop within this uh, protection zone is less than one Celsius. And the pressure drop is less than 0 0.2 bar in hydrostatic systems and one bar uh, in overpressured system. But once this is delineated, then only and exclusively the company can produce geothermal energy from this uh, protection zone, which ensures him a production for a, a long time on a long term. Uh, as I said, a lot of lot of applications came in. Uh, during this uh, after the 21st of March. So you can see all these green areas are the submitted uh, exploration requests. And so there are more than 70. And as you see on the slide that they are concentrating around uh, Budapest, the capital, and mostly on the southeastern part of the country and the southwestern part of the country. But what is the bottleneck of this system? as you saw on this map, that it is working basically on a first come, first served uh, rule. So that means that there are a lot of, uh, lot of applications are overlapping. And if some, some applications are overlapping, then the company who submitted first gets the exploration result, which is, which is not very fair in many cases. So now there is a, a kind of new uh, amendment, then in case of overlapping, then the companies have to sit down and preferably modify their areas and make a consensus. Uh, and if it is not successful, then the mining authority decides and designates the area. Uh, in case if there is an overlap with a hydrocarbon block, and there are a lot of, lot of hydrocarbon blocks in Hungary as well, then there uh, should be a consent from the owner of the hydrocarbon uh, uh, 
concessor or operator. And this is also an additional uh, kind of risk because if the hydrocarbon company does not give this permission, then the, the geothermal exploration cannot happen. And also a consent is required from the water directorate. And the other problem is that, which means that the future planned geothermal energy production will not disturb or, or affect uh, badly the ongoing thermal water systems. But of course, the problem is that that uh, at this stage, at this early stage, there is no real information on the future wells, the future depths and the parameters. So for the water, the water directorate or the water authorities is very hard to access to what would be the possible future interaction. Uh, another big problem is that, okay, the geothermal protection zone is protecting the, the applicant who will produce geothermal energy. But what is, what is uh, protecting the already existing users? And this is, this is totally not clear from the, from the current system. There is a, a kind of regulation which says that the different thermal water wells have to be planned in a way that uh, the yield does not cause a decrease more than 10% of the already existing well, but, but this is still a very, a very vague uh, definition. Problem is that uh, in the application phase, no consent from the landowner or the municipality is required. So it also happened in a couple of cases that a municipality just realized that three or four companies are competing for his territory to use some geothermal energy project. As I said, the barneology and the agriculture are still uh, happening, the licensing of this project is still ha still happening in the old system, so based on the water permits, which also means that, that there are two parallel systems at the moment under different authorities, and this is this is also not, uh, not very good. And finally, also a question arose that at, at this early stage, the companies also delineate the exploration block, but they, they do not have, or most of them do not have a clear idea where they will drill within the block later on. It can also happen that later on, the geothermal protection zone, which will be, of course, around the new wells, is, does not fit the exploration area. And in that case, it will be, it will be another problem. Uh, I think I will skip the reinjection because I'm slightly, I do not want to exceed my time. So basically this is, this is briefly the, the changes in the, in Hungary. And I give the floor to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Anna Maria. Uh, lots of new changes in Hungary and according new challenges. Um, so I would like to uh, have, uh, we have time for maybe one very short question if there is one. Please raise your hand or speak up. Okay, then uh, we move to the next um, speaker. We switch to uh, Germany now, and I ask Gregor Dilge from the German Geothermal Association to tell us more about the licensing procedure in Germany. Yeah, hello everybody. I will share my screen. Um... See. I hope you can see my screen. Not yet. Not yet. No. Uh, yes, looks good. Great. So, hello everybody. My name is Gregor Dilga. I'm from the German Geothermal Association. Um, Florian Stanko was uh, ought to be here, but he has another um, meeting that he has to join. So um, I will stand in here and will just roughly show you what you have to do um, if you want to have uh, your deep geothermal project license in Germany. So um, there are very uh, many laws that you have to look at if you um, yeah, develop a deep geothermal project. The main laws can be um, categorized uh, into mining law, water law, and building law. Um, so the mining law is um, there's the, the mining authority, the responsible authority. They are 
on the, federal, on the level of the federal states, so not on the national level. Um, and if you want to really go through the whole process, you have to get um, more or less uh, three different permissions. So the first is like um, you will try to search for uh, geothermal energy, then you have to get the permission for the exploration, so for the seismic measurements and so on. Um, you have the permission then if you can uh, show that you have the financial ability to do it uh, in a huge area um, over five years to do so. You can also um, have um, a longer time or a, a, a prolongation or how it's called. Um, but um, normally it's those five years. And then if you found something, you can have the permit for the operation, which can last uh, from, from 30 to 50 years in a smaller area, because now you know and you have a current plan where you want to do your project. Um, but those two are just like you have the permission that you have, um, you are the only one to do it in this area for this specific time, um, because the, the ground, you, you, you don't own the ground, you have to get this permission from the state. But um, to do something, to build something, you also have um, an approval of your operation, uh, operating plan. Um, there's the main plan, which uh, always lasts two years, and you have to renew those. Um, there's the framework um, operating plan for yeah, um, a specific time, like for the building, for, for the drilling or so on. And for any specific um, uh, project included in this project, you have to get um, also a specific um, operating plan. That's the mining law and combined with this process um, in, in the deep geothermal uh, projects, uh, in, in this process, you have the water law uh, approval. Um, the responsible or let's say involved part is the water authority because it's um, those two are combined, the mining law and the water law. Um, so the, the leading part is the mining authority, but uh, the water authority is involved. Um, because they are the ones to uh, have an overview over the water law. The aim is to exclude a negative impact on groundwater, on the groundwater quality. There are several laws and regulations, either on the national level um, or the, the level of the federal states. Um, and of course, well, I, I think it should be like that in, in other countries as well, the protection of the groundwater is prior to geothermal use, um, but normally it's no problem, uh, good, uh, no no big problem to get this application when you have the, um, the, the approval when you have the approval for the mining law because um, it's combined, as I said. And um, everything that you build um, that is not in the ground, or let's say more or less like that. Um, is um, underlying the building law and the building authority is the responsible authority. And the separation between the mining law and the building law is the heat exchanger. So if you transform the, um, yeah, if you have a power plant, then uh, it's very clear, but also for the uh, uh, other things like the, like the network, the heating network. Um, it's uh, underlying the building law. And um, yeah, um, most likely it's allowed in industrial areas to build a geothermal site, but also sometimes in other like mixed areas and so on. Um, this uh, process, approval process, is uh, running parallel to the mining law approval, so it's not uh, combined or harmonized uh, uh, process. And as you can see here on the right, there are several other laws that you have to keep in mind, like the emission control law, nature conservation law, um, yeah, private approvals for the land use, for the seismic measurements and so on that you have to um, check. And also the radiation protection law, that's not for, that's for, for the staff of the uh, geothermal site. It's important sometimes, um, but not for the general public. And yeah, that's a rough overview. Um, if you allow, um, because I think I spoke more than five minutes, but just a few suggestions that we have 
um, from the association towards the uh, uh, politicians um, we want to have an exploration program. There's currently something um, evolving here. We want to have harmonized, concentrated uh, procedures um, so that you can you have a one-stop shop also for the building law approval and that you speed up uh, the process. So in general, we are um, suggesting uh, geothermal development law um, that we should think is needed. Okay, thank you very much, Gregor, <laughs> for this brief overview of the situation in um, Germany. And then we move on. Or are there any questions? I think we have uh, also time for uh, one short question, if there is one, about uh, Germany. So. Yes, Anna Maria, please. Yes, uh, just one quick question that uh, if I understand correctly, then the exploration, so, so the mining authority is, let's say, the, the main authority. But what if happening? So even if you if you drill a deep, a deep well for water production, thermal water production, is it the mining authority which gives the license? Of course, consulting with the water authority. If you drill what? Uh, that's I'm sorry, I have to. Uh, sorry, did, did, did not understand it correctly because it's uh, the, uh, the volume is not high enough here. <laughs> sorry. So the question is that if I understand correctly, the mining authority gives the, the permission, or that's the main body for exploration. Yeah. But yeah. even for those activities like drilling a well for thermal water abstraction, they are giving the permits or. Yeah. So, yeah. not the voter authority. No, not the okay. voter. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Hi, Hi Martina Tosso from uh, Creation Hydrocarbon Agency. Can I ask one more question? Yes, sure. Uh, does it mean that you don't have a unique protest from the exploration and uh, production development that uh, investors should apply for the two licenses or? So first you you go for the permission for the exploration, and then when you finish the exploration, then you do the permit for the uh, operation of the plan. And why do you? Uh, is it automatic process or uh, uh, it is separate process? It's it's a separate pro uh, process. Of course, it's um, it's uh, the same authority, and it's um, so you have the context, and then you you know okay. This is what I found, and then you, um, or you mean so, um, which is important is if someone did uh, the, um, the exploration and had the permission for the exploration, then um, of course this company has um, priority to others who want to use the field. If that have, uh, if that answers your question. So, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, then we move on um, to the next speaker. We stay in the German speaking uh, country and I ask my colleague Doris Ruprecht from Tschüss für Austria to tell us a bit about the situation in Austria. Hello everybody, um, do you see my screen? Not in a full presentation mode. Ah, okay, but now I guess. Yes, perfect. So, okay, I will now tell you something about the licensing and the regulatory framework for deep two thermal energy in Austria. And first is a very short introduction. What is deep two thermal energy in Austria? It's everything uh, exceeding a depth of 300 meters. It means hydro geothermal energy systems, the use of thermal water, deep boreal heat exchangers, as well as thermal energy stor storage like Artis and also hot dry rock or enhanced geothermal energy systems. And as you can see on this picture on the right side, we have currently 11 installations in Austria, mainly in two areas. And what we do is most of the time um, using thermal waters for heat production and in two cases also for power generation. What will 
I tell you now is first I will tell something about the legal basis in Austria for deep geothermal energy and I will stick to the Mineral Resources Act and the Water Act. Uh, other acts like the Factories Act or building laws are valid for every other installation so I will stick to that what is unique for the position of geothermal energy. And the second part of my presentation will deal with challenges and questions and problems we face in Austria. So, first of all, the Mineral Resources Act is a federal law and it's a direct federal, it's under direct federal administration, which means there's only one authority for whole Austria dealing with uh, permissions. And what's the scope of this Mineral Resources Act for geothermal energy? It's the mining aspects and it says for the search and research into geological structures of deposits of geothermal energy and the recovery of this energy, insofar you have to use tunnels, shafts or deep boreholes, then this is valid. And um, when you do a borehole, you also have to um, observe the provisions of the borehole mining ordinance and you need the permission from the um, um, mining authorities. So to sum that up a little bit, uh, geothermal energy in Austria is not a mining process, it's a mining-like process and you just um, need a permission for the technical installation. For the use of the heat, um, this is also not clear, um, you have to permit uh, the use of the water and there we have the Water Act. It's also a federal law but it's under indirect federal administration. So in Austria we have nine federal states and concerning the Water Act we have nine different authorities in Austria concerning deep geothermal energy. And the Water Act is for the use and the protection of the groundwater and just as a little information, in Austria, in Austria we have no difference between uh, shallow geothermal groundwater or deep geothermal groundwater and we also make no difference between drinking water or brines. So everything underneath uh, the earth crust is the same when we talk about water in the Water Act. So when I use water, I need a permission for the extraction, I need a permission for the reinjection, as well as for temporary interventions like pumping tests or so on. And um, when I use or when we do geothermal energy with borehole heat exchangers or enhanced geothermal energy systems, we just need a notification procedure. And this is a special form because it's just about the uh, protection of groundwater and it's for every uh, plant that exceeds a depth of 300 meter and when you use this notification procedure it's more like a simple procedure with, which doesn't take that long but it's a bit questionable in Austria and so I will skip that so I will come to the challenges and questions we have. As I said there are several laws of method that are applicable and um, within that we have several procedures so each law requires a single authority requires a single procedure which is very time consuming for installers and planners and which also does not give um, the safety you need when you use that much money for geothermal energy so when you explore somewhere you can't be sure in Austria that you are the one who's uh, mining the energy then. Other challenges I want to mention is that in Austria we have no established management for thermal groundwater bodies. So as you know, geothermal energy uh, reservoirs are cross-border structures, but um, we manage them and permit them in the sense of geographical borders, which is very negative, I think. Uh, second very big challenge in Austria within the laws is that the land ownership is not limited in depth so even when you just cross um, um, the landowner's groundwater or the landowner's ground you have to get an approval by them which is also very time consuming and when you think you will do two thermal energy in a big city maybe you need uh, a 400 or 500 approvals which is also very risky um, next thing I want to mention is that in Austria, I said it before, um, not the use of the heat is regulated, it's only the storage medium that is regulated, which is very negative for geothermal energy, I think, and for the um, energy itself, as well as we don't uh, uh, differentiate between the type of heat generation. And 
as I said before, there's this notification procedure for borehole heat exchangers. It's very questionable if, an, for instance, an Everloop is treated like a single family house borehole heat exchanger, but according to the law, it should be the same. So we are not sure how to execute that and if um, there are nine different opinions in Austria concerning to the federal states. What I also want to mention, uh, which is very important because it's discussed right now in Austria, is how to shorten the licensing process, um, how to shorten it when you have so many different authorities you have to go to. And um, one plan in Austria is the introduction of geothermal area claims. And here I also want to mention um, the renewable energy energy directive and the, um, I don't know how to say, the idea of the go-to areas for uh, shortening licensing process or enhancing licensing processes. So in Austria, when we talk about go-to areas and geothermal area claims, we also have to talk, talk about data and the state of the art. And with this, I will close my presentation. Data in Austria are not publicly available so maybe you know we have a big history in the oil and gas industry and very extensive uh, exploration there we have a lot of data but we don't even know where this data exists it's not managed uniformly and it's not complete for the public and sometimes for detailed information we have to pay for no matter how old this data is i think this is a big problem when we think about go to areas when we think about um, easier licensing and also when we think about uh, conflicts of use and how to assess them. And this brings me to my last point, the state of the art. In Austria, we also have no state of the art concerning deep geothermal energy installations. We have some for the drilling from the oil and gas industry, but we have nothing for thermal water management. Uh, this varies in every uh, federal state. And I think, yeah, uh, for the future, maybe it's also an European problem, the state of the art. This is something we have to discuss maybe all together. So um, this was a short overview. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Doris, for this very interesting talk. Um, are there any questions? All right, it does not look like it for the moment. So thank you very much. And we move on um, to our next speaker, who is Nina Erman from Slovenia. Hello, Nina. Please tell us more about the licensing procedure for Slovenia. Yeah. Do you see the right? No, unfortunately not. No, you, you don't see it. It is not in the presentation mode. See this doubling of the slides. Check. Yeah. Start. Okay. Sorry. Stop. I'll go to full screen mode. Yeah, I'm just. No, it's the same. Yeah, you were on this uh, middle thing above that you just put your mouse before. If you select the second one then it should switch and then we should be able to see the navigation mode what is called nastavite pritzaka my slovenian is pretty bad sorry for that it's still now it's working ah now it was good for a second before that. <laughs> Check. Uh, let me just go out and I will choose again. So 
better. Sure. Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. Sorry, it's always the same. <laughs> Okay, so um, Slovenia is quite similar. Um, we have still two, two uh, water and mining act, which deal with use of, ther of thermal water or, or geothermal energy. What is good now that at the moment we have only one ministry since February this year. Uh, the Mining Act and the Water Act is both run by the Ministry of Manavapa, Ministry of um, Nature. I have it written later. Um, so it's only one ministry with different parts of the ministry and traditionally all except one concessions are granted through the Water Act. But in our case, thermal water is only if you have temperature already at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, then, uh, I understand this uh, presentation is slightly different, so I also tr wanted to point it out that this procedure of how it developed was quite a long one. Uh, but the, the biggest push was in 2015 when we had most of wa our water concessions granted. And this was along with several EU projects within which we made a lot of benchmarking efforts where we wanted to introduce uh, ba uh, best available technology and other aspects of management into this decrease. And actually the new water decrees are very specific. And in the last years, you can see that uh, after we granted the concessions, we had a lot of workshop with concessionaires to explain them how they should do it. And with the authorities where we invited actually also some of you to come and talk to our authorities, how you do it in your country. So, and we also prepared several guidelines for decommissioning of wells and also guidelines for reinjection. We already had a public debate, um, so we tried to make it easier to understand how to do all these application uh, procedures. What is different from other sites is that uh, concession decrees per se are freely available on the internet. So you can get a lot of information already there. All this approach uh, the demands quite strict monitoring. It means that now we have very good official databases, so we know how much water is abstracted. We, ca uh, we also enforce 70% uh, thermal efficiency. It means that if you produce like 60, 60 degree water, you can uh, emit it into the environment with 26 degrees max. Otherwise, you could get inspection uh, trying to explain you that you should lower your waste temperature and the reporting is very systematical so it's easy to compare uh, the, the progress over the years and this uh, requirement for thermal efficiency uh, in all water concessions actually reduced the demand for water abstraction let's say quite quite a lot um, all these new water concessions have the same formula uh, with which you calculate the concession fee, which is quite high actually, and there, but there are two, two these blue factors, uh, especially D is a factor which changes annually based on lobbying of different organizations, and at the moment I think it is 0 0.5. Um, so it's really uh, not easy to calculate how much you will have to pay for the conce water concession over the years because this can change much. Uh, but uh, in this case, a reinjection can reduce your costs of the concession fee. The second type is the Mining Act. In this case, it's actually, we don't talk about the water uh, because 100% reinjection is assumed, but we talk about the use of earth heat. We have only one such example for district heating of a town. And in this case, the price for the concession is quite much uh, lower uh, at the moment because this was um, accepted let's say in 2009 there was no monitoring required they just report how much heat they produce uh, but now we are in a we have plans that if there will be new uh, mining uh, concessions granted they would have to follow the same monitoring as the water concessions uh, 
the overview of rejection, uh, there is a lot of information in the Darling E project. Uh, and uh, when we were searching for some guidelines in close by countries, we saw that there are not much. And in our case, also rejection is obliged only through the Mining Act, while through the Water Act, you can decide if you will do it or not, except for the area or of Northeast Slovenia. This is the transboundary aquifer where at the moment there is a ban for new abstractions. You can use thermal water, but only by using a doublet. Um, yeah, so in this PDF on the regulations, you can get information of the procedure, but it's really, really complicated. What is good is that, so now it's run by only one ministry. Uh, if you go deep, you definitely need the mining project and you need the uh, permit for exploration. And at the moment, all existing projects uh, had only preliminary procedure for environmental impact assessment. So this was, let's say, rather short process question and answers between ministry and the project developer and it was successfully done. And of course you have to fulfill also the building law requirements. Uh, at the moment we have one project. This is a demo project producing uh, geothermal electricity from a dry, dry oil well, uh, gas well actually, um, where they do not need a mining concession because this is a closed loop. Uh, and as such, the geoprobe does not need the mining concession, but they were in the procedure to assess the need for environmental impact assessment. Um, but this was successfully closed quite fast uh, and they do need the mining project, but nothing else. So they will not pay the mining concession at the moment. Uh, and in the last years, because we had quite some intersectoral groups with different ministries uh, trying to figure it out how to develop geothermal, we got this project Info Geothermal, where we have to prepare two legislation amendments. So it means we have to make a plan how to uh, let's say support geological risk insurance schemes in Slovenia and how to support projects with reinjection, cascade use and electricity. Uh, this is by spring 2024, so we will have to come up with something really fast. And the first product is already out. Um, so in the new proposal of the Act for Renewable Energy Sources, which was pr primarily focused on wind and photovoltaic, now, since last month, there are also articles about the geothermal, so-called geothermal regular, regulatory sandbox. And here we, uh, we aim at um, easier procedure for geothermal electricity production. Uh, it can be by geoprobe, so closed loop, all by thermal water production, of course, in a closed system uh, with depths above two kilometers. And what is really new with this uh, proposal is that um, the, uh, the plan is to have exploration program and to keep the data available to the ministries because now um, it's similar, let's say like in Austria, it's very difficult to as, uh, access this data. It's not uh, public yet. And we, wa we really want to de-risk these projects by making an exploration program similar to what uh, how uh, Croatia did it. Uh, what is, let's say, kind of problematic is um, that at the moment, the idea is that this license would be valid for 25 years, which is, in my opinion, quite a lot. And it's actually possible to take the land from a landowner because uh, if a project is recognized as important for the state. So it's kind of, I don't know, not perfect yet, uh, but it's now in the first stage of public debate for this geothermal part, so we will see how it goes. So as a summary, um, all concessions since this year, uh, the mining and the water concessions are managed by the same ministry, which is really good. Um, we try to harmonize all these demands uh, also by incorporating a new law, but we will see if this will be accepted or not. 
uh, and depth is in our case not the limit but it's just the way how you exploit and use thermal water so if you use it for electricity it will be the new law if you use it for with 100 percent reinjection it's the mining law um, and there is a uh, it's a good time for new geothermal projects because also the ministries now have the capacities to decide because they were really, um, they learned from many cases what are best practices also from neighboring countries. So they are, let's say, they decide and really help you if you have a firm project you want to develop. Okay, so this is all from my side. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. Are there any questions? Well, then I have one. Um, what would you say are the main challenges for the licensing um, procedures at the moment, aside from that they also seem to be a bit complicated? Um. I think that except for having somebody to advise you how to do it uh, from a legislation point of view is not such a big problem because we there is an idea how to do it, but there are no support schemes. So from our point of view, this uh, risk de-risking uh, of geological aspects we were also thinking, as uh, several already presented, to make um, these geothermal areas and prepare all the data, make it public and offer to, to investors. This, this will be actually done in a pilot uh, area of two municipalities by next year. Um, but for us, let's say the challenge is definitely uh, making the data available, which already exists making the procedure clear and faster by communicating between the ministries or all the authorities within uh, each ministry and also maybe capacity building of the investors themselves because they just think it's it's easy but it's not they have to have the idea what they want to have at the end sometimes this is also the problem mm -hmm. okay thank you very much any further questions No, oh, okay. Then um, you already mentioned Croatia. That's our next um, talk. So, Jadranka, yeah, please go ahead. We already can see your screen, but uh, we don't hear you yet. Now it's okay, I suppose. Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, as you already mentioned, the legal procedure for the exploration and exploitation of geothermal energy in the Republic of Croatia is quite clear, and we really have uh, quite uh, uh, a law related to all the possibility related to, to, to geothermal. Uh, the main law is Hydrocarbon Exploration and Exploitation Act. And it's uh, part of geothermal energy uh, for uh, for uh, for energy purposes only. It means that the geothermal water for balneologic is not here. Here is only energy purposes of geothermal water, and we have a pretty clear. Uh, Act and also the ordinance and reserves and all the uh, bylaws under the act applicable to, to, to use of geothermal energy. And uh, this is really uh, quite clear what, what the investors should do when they apply for the licenses. Uh, there are two ways of applying for the license and we have one tender process for granting the permit. This is unique process uh, difference from the geo, uh, from Germany, because when the investors um, granting grant a permit for exploration, if they uh, fulfill all the obligation, uh, uh, they will automatically getting a production license. In the Croatia, there is a possibility to get maximum of 25 years 
production license or exploitation license uh, for for the all geothermal water it means it we uh, does not differences uh, make a differences between uh, depth of the targets because uh, in uh, Croatia there are a lot of differences sometimes you can find 85 degrees in less than 100 meters and sometimes you have to go 3000 meter for get this temperature this is the reason why we had divided just temperature and energy what can be produced from this geothermal water with uh, certain temp temperature uh, when you grant an exploration license you it means when the tender is uh, published it's uh, always published and uh, you can apply for the tender uh, the tender documentation is always on the hydrocarbon agency and also in the ministry website and uh, it's available to everyone around the world and they can apply of course there are two ways for for uh, starting this procedure because sometimes the the ministry or the agency also uh, can uh, prepare the tender documentation and uh, prepare a bidding for that and also it could be on the investor proposal uh, some of the documentation we have a database a pretty a huge database and uh, access to our database is uh, possible to be physically and also um, um, electronically by by virtually yes uh, and some of documentation uh, is available for for everybody and some part of this documentation could be only uh, bought in, in the agency of course when the investors make some uh, submitting uh, proposal uh, they have elements who must be uh, uh, satisfied for for the for the proper uh, submitting? Uh, they are written in the law. They are written also in the in the documentation of of uh, tendering and everything. It's it's not it, it is not necessary to just reading the uh, what is what is necessary for the applying, but. Uh, criteria for selecting the, the 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 winner of this bidding uh, it's also um, publicly known and it means that they uh, the investor or someone who wants to apply must fulfill the technical financial and some professional capability uh, they have to somehow prove us that it's possible to 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 make this project or offer from his side uh, possible. Uh, when the exploration license uh, is granted, the maximum for uh, exploration period is five years. There are possibility to to make it two months, uh, twice by two uh, six months extension just if uh, they started to do something but not finishing but it cannot be just started in the extension area it means that uh, if it's not allowed sometimes it's uh, it's necessary to uh, make some for example uh, for exploration license all uh, activity uh, also investor is obliged to to uh, apply for the EIA study and it must be um, also in uh, special urban planning documents uh, uh, compatible with this. It means that sometimes it's necessary uh, that uh, EIA study and the process of getting a final solution could be a little bit longer than it's uh, it's written in the law it means that this is the reason uh, what give you a, a reason to, to to apply for extension if if the state is somehow um, um, guilty for 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 stopping you in some process we can make it uh, for you extension for for the investor extension that he, ma he can fulfill the obligation. Uh, all the exploration permits, uh, if, if the results of exploration uh, is positive, investor must uh, oblige to report notice of commercial discovery. And after that, 
propose the boundary of the future uh, mining plot or the future production license. Uh, also, not only exploration work, also production work or exploitation work is necessary to pass EIA procedure. Uh, it is uh, quite a little bit easier than for uh, hydrocarbons, but they also have to have to be in line with the urban special plan uh, according to development plan what they propose. When they finally have this development plan or, or a development and exploitation plan, uh, this is the this is the uh, this is the moment when he can uh, apply for the production license and it's a maximum of 25 years could be extended if the reason are uh, uh, if the investor have request to, to make it longer but first permit for exploration is a maximum 25 years for the subsurface facility, uh, the ministry responsible for the construction is giving the, the for example, for power plants or something what is uh, on the surface, but all subsurface infrastructure, also the, the, the construction uh, permit is under the ministry responsible for energy. Uh, when when it's when the the, the whole the, the project means positive and all the uh, licensing are granting, then you have to be also in line with uh, energy production uh, law, which is Energy Regulation Act, Energy Market Act, and Heat Market Act, and also Renewable Energy Sources and Highly Effective Cogeneration Act. Uh, as a result of, of our procedure and our uh, law, we have now seven uh, production licenses or exploitation licenses. Uh, one produce electricity and six are on uh, heating and also 20 exploration licenses in the different stage of exploration. Uh, for the seven ongoing evaluation uh, projects, uh, we are just closed the, the, the big uh, ten, uh, bidding round, uh, what was closed 1st of June, and now we got uh, for the for the six blocks uh, was a bid, but only for six, uh, for uh, five, we got the offer. It means the 16 uh, offers from the five blocks from 11 different uh, domestic and uh, international company and the ongoing evaluation process is still uh, in uh, still now we expected that it will be finished first of august then it could be also issued these seven uh, exploration licenses uh, one bid round is still open the deadline is 21st this month, and two uh, blocks are prepared for bidding. One of them are for heating, and uh, one of them are offered in the last bid round, but we didn't get any offer for them, and we plan to, to, to repeat this, not immediately, but from sometimes. Anyhow, for the... For the um, Panonian part of the Croatia, uh, we mean that there are a lot of uh, perspectivity because the, the database uh, fulfilled from the hydrocarbons at the beginning give us a lot of data when uh, what we can use for the geothermal uh, also and we have 43 heating perspective blocks or projects and also 32 for electricity producers. Uh, for maybe two or three years ago, uh, there was a, a, a little bit more complicated, but now uh, we are trying to improve our systems. Uh, we are constantly in uh, discussion with the Ministry of Construction because they are now making the change, uh, changes in, in their law, means that the 
if the geothermal water for energy purposes would be used only for own purposes, it could it will be much much easier to 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 grant this, and it will be much easier according to the uh, special urban planning also for for the environmental impact. Uh, for the agricultural, we are constantly in uh, discussion and conversation with the Ministry of Agriculture because there are a lot of uh, uh, agricultural subjects who want to use the geothermal because the geothermal is really uh, possible to use for agricultural pretty easier, much easier than the, for the electricity or something like this. And it means that uh, it will be also some improvement related to the to the uh, uh, when you use the geothermal uh, water for energy purposes for your own needs. Uh, I think that it could make or give us a chance to be uh, more efficiently and uh, more quick. To, to do all of this situation. Also, Ministry for the Energy, uh, uh, it's uh, now makes some parallel process. It means when you when you get some results, uh, you you have obligation to to make a make an assessment uh, how much the, it could be commercial or how much you would go to uh, further with the projects. And you can start parallel with the projects and with, with the EIA study and also with the urban planning. It means that three, three process, different process could be parallel, but of course they are some conditions. The final solution for, 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 the, for the licensing cannot be issued because all, before all of this uh, solutions from the EIA and solutions for the uh, special planning could be issued before. And we really try to, to, to make it uh, more quick and we hope so that we uh, uh, have some uh, improvement last two years, but still always is some space for improvement more. That's all from us. Thank you very much, Martina. Um, are there any questions uh, about Croatia? Yes, you can you can ask. Uh, I'm Yadran Kaleshko. I am the head of uh, uh, hydrocarbon and geothermal water for energy purposes from the ministry. Martina and uh, me are together in the in the in this uh, presentation. Perfect. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> Um, Anna Maria, please. Yes, a quick question. Thank you for the excellent overview. Uh, if uh, so, if I understand correctly, the exploration can be initiated either by the agency by predefined blocks or by from the local, let's say, communities or companies or whatever. The question is that if a local community, a city or a company initiates some exploration area. Is it also going under this uh, bidding process? Yes, yes. So together can, with the... Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the second way of what I showed in presentation. It could be uh, started with the ministry and also it could be started by the town or by the local community or something else. But all this process must be publicly announced and the bidding must be passed all of this. Because so the process uh, is the same for, for both yes. types of initiations. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah. And what happens in your in your case if there are overlapping areas, if some if two different companies apply for the same area? Uh, we have uh, pretty clear if if it's a different, uh, for example, if hydrocarbons and geothermal are overlapped, but we have no any case to overlap because it's not possible. The ministry giving, uh, you can propose the boundary what you want to, to get, but the ministry approve this uh, this uh, area and we uh, according to to our law there is no possibility to add this at the same planes to to two investors could be we can just divide it this uh, one will get uh, one 
uh, coordinates and another one who is applied can, can, can get some another, not the same area. Okay. But well, basically you decide, so the agency decides uh, to avoid, how to avoid these overlaps. Yeah, the ministry decided, the, the final uh, solution is from the ministry, yeah. All right. Um, are there further questions? If not, then we come to our last um, talk, last but not least. Philippe Dumas from ECEC, the European Geothermal Energy Council, will tell us more about uh, licensing and regulatory framework in the EU. Hello, Philippe, the floor is yours. And we cannot hear you. No, still not. Strange. Uh, please try again. Now I hope. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it works okay, now. Okay, I don't know what to the technical part. Thank you. We're understanding. Good afternoon to all of you. Indeed, I will be quite brief, present you overview. It's going in full screen mode. One second. Here we are. So good afternoon. Indeed, I will present you first the overview in Europe of what we have in terms of concession. So indeed, if we look at that, we have 142 geothermal power plants in operation with a capacity of 3.4 gigawatt installed, producing more than 19 teratons. We have also 383 geothermal distributing system in operation uh, for information 40 new last year. So in total, indeed, we have 525 concessions that will be on ongoing. When we say concessions in some countries, it's called permit for exploitation or permit for production or et cetera. But as a, as a general terminology, we use concessions. What is ongoing? Um, ongoing is that we have quite a lot of wells in the pipeline that indeed for electricity we plan more than 30 wells to be drilled in the three to five next years because there's 25 power plants under development construction or extension and more than one project also investigated for deep geothermal for heating and cooling there are more than 100 wells to be drilled also in the next three to five years with 16 projects uh, currently drilling robot to drill and 300 projects in the pipe. So it means that we have more than today 100 uh, permits for exploration um, are, are ongoing. As it has been mentioned by, by the colleagues from the geological surveys of entities in other countries, in Germany, in Austria, in uh, Slovenia, and in Croatia, the duration of a permit for exploration is depending country per country. What is the European uh, pan-European framework no, on, on licensing? Uh, there's no legislation on, on permitting for, for geothermal, but what we have seen is that many national legislations make a reference to uh, the directive on uh, granting and using um, hydrocarbons for the prospection, the exploration, and the production. Indeed, in many countries, it has been one uh, one of the acts used also to transform that for, for geothermal uh, licensing. Um, and uh, what we have seen is a second piece of legislation that you have not really referred to today, but uh, it's quite important for private developers, 
is the environmental impact assessment indeed in, in the licensing uh, especially for the first permit for for uh, exploration uh, it's accompanied by the by the request to publish um, non-environmental impact assessment the third uh, european directive it was mentioned uh, several times this afternoon is the water framework directive during water uh, extraction uh, if it's a, it's an open loop system um, and uh, and reinjection also um, I have seen also that some of you are familiar with uh, recent decisions at uh, European level in the framework of what we call the report EU, so uh, the answer of the European Union um, after all, first the, the COVID-19 economic crisis, but also the high uh, energy, uh, electricity and gas prices due to the invasion of Ukraine by, by Russia. Um, to simplify and to develop renewables, indeed the simplification goes with a several decision taken. First, it's a decision from 19 December 2022, so six months ago, um, that all member states must map uh, the go-to areas. Uh, so indeed, you as a geo survey, you will be asked, I don't know when, <laughs> but to, to map the geothermal go-to areas. Um, what was planned, uh, but uh, for these uh, go to areas, you will have a shorter uh, deadline of six months uh, for um, uh, simplifying the permitting. So uh, what we do not understand at, at that stage is how much at national level it will uh, require a reform of the mining law and the licensing process. Um, in terms of uh, simplification of, of permitting, the second decision um, regards uh, more geothermal heat pumps, but you can see it's also large scale geothermal heat pumps, it's why I'm referring to it today. It's another decision uh, from last year uh, about a fast permitting emergency measures for the permit granting of geothermal heat pumps up to 50 megawatt thermal. So you could say 50 is quite large. Huh? We don't have uh, such a system in geothermal yet. Huh? 50 megawatt. Um, uh, we have just electric heating, but not uh, assisted with heat pumps. And in this area, in theory, we want uh, the, the permitting to be less than three months. We don't think it's really realistic for a large scale project, but anyway, it was the decision as a, as a political decision. And here, clearly, the, the, the good practice we see that in many countries, I just give the example of ASN in Germany, it's what we call a traffic light system to streamline regulation. So, areas where you just have a notification area where you have uh, an authorization with a maximum delay and uh, when uh, sensitive areas will require uh, further authorization um, no in terms of an overview uh, on licensing procedure to, to sum up a bit what we have seen is that the act on exploration and exploitation of other kinds govern the exploration of geothermal in many countries um, some have adapted their mining law with a dedicated chapter on geothermal to, to allow the development of a proper uh, geothermal licensing, but it's not true all over Europe. Um, it's still ongoing in many areas. An example is the French mining code, uh, which gives an exclusivity uh, for the given area of lease. What is one aspect which is clear is that indeed the, the property, the ownership of underground is always from the state and is given for a period of time to a developer. In general, we see two kinds of permit, the first permit for research or exploration and the second permit for exploitation. What is changing all over Europe is that who is giving this, sometimes it's national authority, but also for some sm smaller scale project, it can be also at local instruction. What has been highlighted today, that indeed in some countries, licenses is very complex and uh, therefore you have a lengthy process. We have seen in Italy, I mentioned five years, but some, some projects for electricity production in Tuscany, I think for 10 years, they are waiting for final authorization for just a research permit. The duration of the concessions are, are within a country different. You can see in France, concession for 50 years, 30 years or 20 years. Uh, and uh, that is true uh, all over Europe. What is also true is that usually countries, uh, after a first research permit, they allow uh, an extension. I think it was mentioned in, in, uh, in Croatia in the last talk. Now, in terms of challenges and, and recommendations from, from, from our side, 
Um, indeed, the, the challenge is the multiple responsibility between my water authorities, mining authorities, environmental authorities, etc., etc. The duration of, of a different permits can, can be an issue, um, especially uh, when it's aligned with a financial support scheme, a feed-in tariff, a feed-in premium, or, or a PPA. On environmental permit, I think we can uh, um, make some improvement in uh, in terms of uh, of simplification of the process. Is not to overcome uh, the, the issue uh, of having a uh, yeah, but it's probably to provide some guidelines to develop or to harmonize guidelines um, to have a faster process. The lack of centralized management and cooperation between responsibilities, I think, it has been highlighted today uh, in, in all the talk. So, as in terms of recommendation from our side, uh, indeed, uh, we recommend a one-stop shop. We do not need a single authority, but it's probably a more cooperation uh, between different entities. Uh, to publish best practice guide, I think, I don't know in which call I heard, but it was indeed the, uh, the idea to have some, uh, some booklet of best practices or of case studies. To ensure competent to this process, the necessary knowledge, skills, and training is probably a job for you as geological survey to train some local authorities to be more familiar with geothermal. Um, controlling the technical and financial capability of license applicants. Indeed, we have seen some, some um, countries, for example, I have in mind Greece, which is today publishing the third uh, tender for, for concessions, and the first one were not really successful due to this criteria of financial capability because the awarded uh, company was not able to develop any project, although they uh, were promising it in their, in their tender. Um, so drafting a, simplif a simple IA guideline dedicated to deal geothermal, it's what I was mentioning in, in the slide before, the best available technologies also to define them uh, for IA um, and to provide flexibility in the process uh, of, of IA. But uh, yeah, I was surprised that it was not more mentioned today by, by the different participants, but we see uh, in Europe, um, indeed from a project developer point of view, that it's where there are easy improvement to do uh, to fasten uh, permitting. I'm closing uh, my presentation with two announcements for you. Uh, next week on 23rd, we uh, organize a workshop that could be interesting for your communities, how to develop a geothermal distributing project. Um, and the week after, even more interesting, no, not two weeks after, on the 6th of July, uh, it was discussed today, data. Uh, so we want indeed to contribute to the decision on how to have better data for, for successful general projects. We have a first decision on geothermal resources and classification from the uh, UNFC, but also you have seen the World Bank as map has published also some, some guidelines. And after the decision on how to acquire new data for, for geothermal projects. You will see the agenda and, and, the, and the formal announcement soon. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Philippe, for this very good summary of uh, and overview of Europe. Um, and now, do we have any questions um, to Philippe? Elsa, please go ahead. Philippe, this is Elsa from Portugal. Uh, do you do you have uh, uh, any guidelines for uh, uh, drawing the the go to areas mappings maps? No, we know that the people in charge of it are, are colleagues from uh, uh, a, a former colleague from uh, the of Slovenia, uh, which is now working at the GRC in, in Peten. The GRC is a joint research center, is a unit of the European Commission. Peten is in Netherlands, it's them in charge of the good areas. They have already started with uh, photovoltaic, solar photovoltaic and wind energy, and they start to do uh, that for geothermal. I know they have been in contact with your project geocal service for Europe, the working group uh, number, I don't know, on, uh, on geothermal energy. And I know, uh, I think if you have a colleague from Catalonia, no? Uh, it was him also liaising with, with them. I don't know if uh, Inyazi is there. I watched him before. But I know that they were in contact uh, uh, between your uh, geocal service for Europe and, and this GRC. There's no real, indeed, uh, I think the first work, Elsa, you're right, 
before to map any uh, areas uh, at the country level is to have this metadata base now uh, to have an harmonized comparison of mapping but uh, i don't have more information i know that your colleagues are, are working on it and especially in in Asia from catalonia yes but i know that for for photovoltaic for instance uh, they they used uh, some guidelines that uh, that prepared the pre the the preliminary maps so I was wondering if uh, the EU and the, the, the responsible person will uh, uh, launch any guidelines for for the for all the countries to 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 the, to draw their their go to map their go to maps on geothermal. Uh, I don't think we have the capacity to do that as a European Commission without having recommendation from your geographical services. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That, that is clear. So you will be consulted before they do anything. Uh, I have another question. Um, the recommendations that you showed on your last slide, are they going to be in the EU framework or in a directive um, sometime? Uh, is it, is, are there any plans to include them in a directive? So, so these are coming from a GNV project. Maybe some of you were familiar with this project or were involved in this project. Now, our, our, our main objective is to have a soft uh, process for this recommendation. So it's more to have you know, um, some, some uh, guidelines no, that can be endorsed by, by some, uh, some entities uh, or to have uh, some uh, best, best practices uh, guide. Uh, um, and for sure, on IEA, there's probably need to have maybe further work on, on some guidelines or to process with uh, environmental impact assessment to not have to uh, bureaucratic and uh, too long process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I do not see any more yes, raised there's, hands there's or is question. there a question? There's one question uh, in the chat on Slavko Sobol, obviously. Yeah, uh -huh. and Slavko, it will be Joya Falcone presenting uh, this uh, UNFC on the 6th of July. All right, thank you. I do not see any more raised hands or other um, questions. So I think we saw today uh, a very good overview that uh, in many countries, there is still a way to go to achieve this one-stop shop that everybody, I believe, agrees would be um, a good thing to have. Some countries already have uh, ways how to deal with the concession and delineate areas that should be developed. This will be a task for all of us, uh, according to the EU regulations. And yeah, I hope we can move all forward uh, with that and hope you have uh, gained some knowledge from the other countries. I thank you very much uh, for attending this um, webinar and I have just one more announcement to make as well. Um, the next workshop that we are planning, uh, the next webinar will deal with energy storage potential. Um, we want to gain insights from European case studies. So uh, we are looking for um, contributions. The webinar will take place on the 27th of uh, September. And if you have any um, projects that you want to present or other uh, case studies that deal with estimating or quantifying the energy storage potential, uh, then please get in contact with me or um, Stasha. So thank you very much for this Can webinar. Just one more thing, there was a raised hand from Nina. Uh, sorry. Please, Nina. Um, I have a question for Anna Maria. Maybe I missed it, but um, how is it with reinjection? So this new approach you have, does it demand or has, I don't know. No, it, it actually did not introduce anything new to reinjection. So it is, let's say required, but on a legal basis, it is still not compulsory. So the, the granting authority, the mining authority, or the water authority can decide. In most of the cases, they decide to have the injection, but it's, it's not compulsory per se. Okay, thank you. Good. 
there are not more um, questions, then I think we can close the webinar.